Today, your reading selection is Georgia's Rules, and it's adopted, or adapted, not adopted, adapted by Andrew Short from a list of George Washington, our country's first president. Um, <clears throat> now, I want to talk to you a little bit about George Washington before we get started, because George's rules uh, are George Washington's rules. And George Washington was our first president. He was president from eight years, from 18 or I'm sorry, 1789 to 1797, 1789 to 1797. And that was more than 200 years ago. And because he was the first president, President Washington wanted to set a good example for the future presidents. By doing the right thing, uh, he thought about his entire life. Those were things that he thought about. So when George Washington was growing up, he copied 110 110 rules for good behavior into a list that was later discovered by people um, who study the past called historians. And although George Washington likely wrote these rules of behavior as a way to practice his handwriting, he eventually chose the ones that were had like a special meaning to him, and he wrote the rewrote them in his own words and were published after his death in a book titled George Washington's Rules of Civility and decent behavior in company and conversation. That is a really long title for a book. So this is rhyming. So it's kind of like poetry, but it also has um, elements of nonfiction in it. So it's a rhyming nonfiction um, story. So it's going to give us some information. It's going to use facts and it's going to use rhyming words. And um, the rhyme kind of presents it um, in a more entertaining way. It's more fun to read. Okay, so your essential question is how can good rules help you be a leader? So that's, these were the rules that George Washington thought would be good rules. And our comprehension strategy is going to be visualizing. So you're going to be making a mental picture in your head and thinking about um, the experience, how the experience would be with, you know, your five senses, your sight, your smell, your taste, touch, um, sound. And then we're also going to be making connections. So we're going to connect to our own experiences or other books that we have read before and compare them and see how they're alike and how they're different. All right, let's read George's Rules. George Washington was brave. He was also very kind. Having good behavior was always on his mind. When he was just a boy, he learned a thing or two about showing good behavior, rules we now share with you. you should do all things with respect for others. Treat those around you as your sisters and brothers. Speak with kindness. Never say mean words. Be happy for others and always show concern. So these numbers above, these were the, remember there were 110 rules originally. So this was rule number one. And in that 110 rules, this was rule 58, 58. Good compliments are nice. They mean something to all. Hand them out freely to the short and to the tall. Show a happy face. Share your smile too. Be serious when it, it is time. It is sometimes right to be blue. Now, Let's stop for a second because this is a good time to make a connection. Um, <clears throat> what connections can you make to the rules described in the text? Um, I think that I want to take a look right up here where it says good compliments are nice. And I want to talk because compliments is not a yellow word, but compliments is a word that we need to know. Compliments means that you say something nice to someone. <clears throat> Either, you know, I like your your new shirt, or I like your haircut, or I like the way that you really tried so hard in math today. Those are compliments when you say something nice to the, to someone. And the reason why it's so important is I want you to make a connection on how you feel when someone gives you a compliment. How do you feel when someone gives you a compliment? It makes you feel good, right? It makes you smile. It makes you feel nice in, in, inside. So, that's the reason that George thought that that was so important. Do not be glad at others' troubles, even if they were mean to you. Show sympathy in times of need and earn a friend brand new. Stay focused and on topic. 
Share your story when it's time. Keep your story short and sweet like this little rhyme. All right, here is a good time to make a connection, I think, to um, school. All right, I think rule number 35, stay focused and on topic. A lot of times when we're doing our work, we kind of like to tell stories about what happened yesterday at dinner or what happened, what we're going to do at a recess today. But when it's time to work, it's time to work. So stay focused and on topic because there's a time to have those conversations, but not during math class or reading class or writing class. Share your story when it's time. So at the appropriate time, keep it short and sweet like this little rhyme. I think that's a good connection to make with some rules that we have at school. Call each of your teachers by his or her proper name. Use Mr., Miss, or Mrs., and you will never be to blame. You should stay in line when going with your class. Walk, keep up, never push, and always let the teacher pass. You know, these rules from George Washington really do make a connection to rules that we have at school about staying in line and not pushing and having respect for your teacher. Lots of good connections. Be sure to say thank you when you are corrected. Others are trying to help. You are not being rejected. Learning how to read and count is a lot for some to juggle. Do not make others feel bad. Encourage kids who struggle. And again, this is really important. Sometimes people have trouble with certain things in our classroom, whether they have trouble learning their addition facts or their phonics work. And it's okay. We want to encourage those kids. We want to make them feel better, not feel bad. And we want to help them. I really think that we can make a lot of connections with this story to what happens at school. George Washington was a smart guy. What, what is said may not be true. Do not believe everything you hear. Repeat untruths carelessly and your friends may disappear. So pretty much this is saying whatever is said, it could be a rumor. It might not be true. And if you start saying things that aren't true, other people might not want to be your friend. Do not tell bad stories about people who are not there to give each a chance to self-defend. It is only fair. Don't be a gossip, right? Don't run around and be in everybody's business, right? Be um, careful about what you say about other people. So many good lessons. Secrets belong to others. They may not be for you. Wait for others to share freely and only if they want to. Promises are important. Promises are true. Only make promises you can keep and be sure to follow through. All right. Now, I want to talk a little bit about rule number 60 here. Secrets belong to others. They may not be for you. Wait for others to share freely and only if they want to. Now, I want you to think, and I want you to think about a time, visualize in your head a time when you saw people talking and you wondered what they were talking about. How did that make you feel when you were left out of the conversation? Sometimes it may make you feel bad that you're left out of the conversation, but sometimes not every conversation is for you, right? Like these two people are sharing something, a secret between each other. They could turn a little pinky promise that looks there about not to tell. But if they wanted to share with you, they would. And I know sometimes that's hard to not be part of, of a certain group, but it's okay. Because I'm sure you'll share a secret with somebody and you may not share with everyone. Um, so it just goes kind of goes both ways. Listen to your mom and dad, your auntie and grandpa too. Listening will make them glad. They do their best for you. So George Washington wasn't just thinking about school behavior. He was also thinking about home behavior. Listen to your conscience, that little voice inside. Listen to your conscience and let, your, let it be your guide. These were George's rules written down for him and you. 
He tried hard, but sometimes failed, just as you might do. And I want you to think about how George Washington might have felt writing down all these rules and what he might have been thinking about. It's a good time to visualize what was he thinking about rules of civility and decent behavior in company and conversation. George never quit, though. He never set his rules aside. Now we know him for greatness, though long ago he was alive because he wrote those words, these words down. And for many other reasons, we remember George Washington. Before I let you go, we do need to go over a few vocabulary words. So let's head back. I'm looking. Not there yet. This is kind of a long story. I mean, it was a quick read, but it had a lot of pages to it. The first one is respect. You should do all things with respect for others. I want to make sure that my volume is all the way up for you. Respect. Careful thought. Show your teacher respect. Be kind and listen to him. Respect. All right, so respect means careful thought. You should do all things with respect for others. You should do all things with careful thought for others. That means think about how they feel. You know, and when you're doing something, think about how it would make another person feel. Let's find our next vocabulary word. There it is. Show sympathy in times of need, need and earn a friend brand new. Let's talk about what earn means. Earn. To deserve or win because of good behavior. The dog will earn a treat for good behavior. Earn. All right. So earn means to deserve or win because of good behavior. Now, good behavior doesn't all necessarily mean um, minding your manners and all that. It could be the behavior that you have on the field when you win a trophy for like a football game or a baseball game, those kinds of things. So you earn it by something that you do. So if you earn something, you're not just getting it. You've done something to deserve it or win it. You earn it. And your last word for today is encourage. Do not make others feel bad. Encourage kids who struggle. Encourage to cheer on, to share hope or confidence. We encourage each other. We cheer ourselves on. Encourage. So encourage means to cheer on, to share hope or confidence. Do not make others feel bad. Instead, cheer them up. Share your hope. Share some confidence with them. All right. I will be sure to include discussion starters with this story today so that you can talk about George's rules with mom and dad. And I bet there are a lot of George's rules that mom and dad will approve of.